Welcome back. Okay, we're in a three-part series on developing mental toughness. To remind you what at stake, I repeat the wise words of the philosopher Muhammad Ali, who said, everyone has ability, it always comes down to mind games. Whoever is more mentally strong wins. The first way to tap into your mind's superpowers was to threaten it, to scare it into action. Bust out that incredible hulk that you have inside, then redirect that power to achieving incredible goals. Okay, here's the second hack. I've already mentioned that your mind is weak. It is also emotionally immature. It is, it is so easily tempted. It is so easily manipulated. That is why blatantly false, manipulative, absurdly fantastical commercials and marketing gimmickry works on your mind. The mind has the emotional maturity of a six-year-old. Whatever you can get a six-year-old to believe, do, and buy is what commercial marketing can convince your mind of. Don't believe me? Just look at your garage and closets. Look at the stuff you know you shouldn't have bought, but still stuff into your face. There's absolutely no logic to why we consume things like donuts and cupcakes and fast food and soda. Those are the choices of a six-year-old. Mental toughness is about emotional control. Once you learn to manipulate or control your emotions, then you can control your choices and thus your life. Remember, the winner in life will come down to who is mentally strong. So here's how you do it. Stop fighting it. You wouldn't trust your six-year-old to make important life choices, would you? You shouldn't trust your mind either. You have to keep those decisions away from your mind. This is the primary secret ingredient inside the insane productivity system. It isn't about teaching you time management. It isn't about trying to tell you how to self-manage. That doesn't work. We know that by your results, if anything requires willpower, discipline, or self-control to succeed, you will fail. You see, willpower, self-control, and discipline will fail 100% of the time over time. That's why all those books and blogs and other training programs have failed you. They tried to tell you to have willpower and to have discipline. That's a bad plan. Instead, you need to know how to set up a high-performance environment and daily method of operation that renders willpower and discipline unnecessary and obsolete. That is the only way you're going to get into and stay into your strength zone. Because here's some other bad news or good news. Your mind is also lazy. That's the bad news. The good news is though, you can leverage that laziness as well, if you know how. You can use that Aikido power that I've talked to you about before to use the weakness of your mind and turn that power source of your mind into doing it what you want it to do. You do this by making the behavior that you wanna do super easy and convenient to do, and the bad behavior that you wanna stop super difficult and inconvenient to do. For instance, if a bad diet is your thing, remove every bad thing out of your main environments, your house, your car, your office, wherever you are most of the time, and particularly when you get hungry. Make it hard to eat poorly. The last thing you should do is make it easy for your weak and lazy mind to conveniently eat crap food. Remember Odysseus from Homer's Odyssey? He knew he'd fail to resist the siren's call, so he tied himself to his ship's mast. You too will fail to resist the siren's call, so remove the sirens. Now, once you've activated your incredible Hulk superpowers by showing it the uh, potential danger, then you've removed any potential kryptonite that might derail or suppress that superpower, now we need to govern that power as a force for good and keep it on the straight and arrow. The third trick here is to assign a parole officer to keep your mind in check. You have to police your mind constantly to keep it in line. This is done through tracking and using tools of measurement. This is why I made such a big deal about tracking in the compound effect and do a special mentoring session on it in Insane Productivity. The bottom line is this, you can get your mind to do most anything through temporary brute force. But as soon as you get distracted, it will start to drift all the way back to its comfortable previous patterns, the patterns of weakness and laziness. You have to constantly yank its attention back and smack it around if it doesn't stay on its course. So take your one thing, the one area that you wanna become mentally stronger in, and one, threaten it into attention. Two, remove all the temptation to do the wrong thing. And three, continually measure and monitor and track its progress like a parole officer. You got it? We're counting on you to do this. Your family is counting on you to do this. Your teammates are counting on you. Your greater potential, your better future is counting on you. Don't let us down. Pick just one thing and follow these three steps. Tell us the one thing that you're gonna 
toughen up on and conquer once and for all. And I look forward to reading the comments below.